is missing mod associated with Kentovan at all? Is she related? Is she connected with them in some kind of way? Because I have never seen some we've seen her do uh, that she's willing to twist stories and make up all kinds on the on the just she just kind of wings it when she makes her videos. Wait, yeah. um, oh, what, been, what is her deal? It is absolutely bizarre to me. Um, I actually had mentioned to Missing Mod, and I said to her, it's amazing to me how you are defending this man who you don't even know, nor have you ever spoken to, as far as I know. I don't know. She could have lied to me and have spoken to him personally. I don't know. But uh, she told me she hasn't, so fine. But it's amazing how she's just hardcore defending this guy. So what she told me was that he is a pastor, he is spreading and sharing the gospel and getting people saved. And I said, okay. So, cause I, cause missing mod knows I've had a personal conversation with missing mod and I told her, well, Ken Hoven does this, 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 this. And I've named out, I've done a whole list on all the things that he has done wrong to people and, and everything else. And she says, it doesn't matter about those things. He, he gets people saved and he's a pastor and he preaches the gospel and that's the most important. So he's good. And I said, wait a second. So if I'm a pastor, let's just say I go out into the world and I spread and share the gospel. And it, does that give me the right now to still commit adultery? Does that give me the right to still live sinfully where I could lie, steal, cheat from people, uh, be cunning towards people, scam people that so I can still live sinfully just as long as I'm preaching the gospel, I'm good. So I asked her, I said, what about Kenneth Copeland? Is Kenneth Copeland a good preacher? He he's has a ministry. Kenneth Copeland does. Do you think he's a good preacher? What about Jim Jones? Jim Jones is an American preacher. And Jim Jones is also a mass murderer. So is Jim Jones good because he was out preaching whatever God he was preaching? Julie, it, I, I don't know if you know this. I've actually done videos on Jim Jones. They have FBI recordings of him where he said that he was an atheist masking himself in religion to get the wow. congregation. He actually, uh, I've got recordings of him behind the podium telling the people there that their God is a sky daddy. Wow. And that he told him to throw, he said, I wipe my ass with the Bible. So he wasn't actually religious. He was another con man fake. And then, of yeah. course, he got heavy into drugs and then killed over a thousand people. Yeah. Well, well, this is the point I was trying to make across to uh, Missing Mod. So if I'm so she's basically saying it doesn't matter what Kent Hoven does. As long as he's preaching the gospel, he's a good man. OK, well. What if I go out and preach the gospel and get people saved to the Lord? Does that give me the right to still commit adultery? Does that give me the right to steal money from people? Does that give me the right to harmfully hurt people and falsely accuse people? See, Julie and Nick, this is one of the things that really bothers me about Christianity, and I've always been straightforward about this. One of the reasons why we've had so many scandals go down throughout the years is because for some reason people want to give priests and preachers some kind of weird spiritual authority or badge, even if they find out that there could be something happening with harm to children and all that, instead of doing something about it, they just justify and defend and say they have this, this like respect for these people and move them around and all this. Why does the church have this problem for it? Why can't people just come out and say, this person who claims to be a pastor is a piece of dirty, filthy. Why can't people just do that? Why does it always have to be this ring around the rose for it? Well, well, well oh, I'll, go, go ahead. I mean, first, I, I want to say too about missing mod is, is you know, I, I do. I think we should pray for her. I think that she's being led around by someone <clears throat> bowling um, in the background, uh, telling her things, you know, and, and and lying to her specifically about things, which like like the whole Cindy thing. I know he knows for a fact that she did not. Uh, pay for Chris Jones to be flown. Bolin knows that for a fact too. So if he's, I don't know if he's the one stating that, but if he is, he's lying through his teeth about it. And he knows that she didn't because when Paul Hansen had asked her if she would do that, she contacted us and she's like, I don't think this is right. What do you, and we, me and Bolin both told her, don't touch that with a 10 foot pole. And this was before Zaire was found. This was before all these things came out. So she was still trying to work her marriage out with Kent and, you know, and she just wasn't sure what to believe at that point. But me and Bolin both told her, don't do it, you know, and I guess she ended up 
texting Paul back saying, I am not doing that. You know what I mean? And she has that evidence. So I don't know who's lying to her about that, but someone is. But I also want to say, too. But, but Nicholas there, and Julie, you know, even though Missing Mod made up this big story, even if it had any truth to it, why does it matter? It, it, even if Cindy or Mr. Rogers himself paid for a plane ticket for Chris to come down there, the compound's run by Kent. Is Kent not going to see a vehicle pull up with Chris Jones and a child come out? Was it not Kent Hoven who told Julie, no, put the kid and the guy in with one single mattress? That wasn't Cindy Lincoln. Wait, wait, hold on. It, he, no, no. She, she's not a, claiming that she sent Chris Jones down there. She's claiming that after all this happened, Chris Jones got attacked by Zaire's family and that Cindy flew them out of the country, flew him out of the country. So she's not claiming that she sent him to DAL or any of that. She's claiming that she flew him out of the country after he got attacked by someone and who she's saying that Mark stirred up the family and got them to attack him. And how would I mean, Mr. Maud know crazy. any of it in the first place? He, how would she know? It'd have to be right. from Steve Bolin if she's close with him. Ah, Steve Bolin, the same guy who I got a video up recently. And this is why, this is what Steve Bolin and Missing Mod, this is what they feel the need to do. They have to discredit our accountability. They well, have to discredit us in some type of way. So when we come out being the truth, they know that we're speaking the truth, but they have to discredit us and character assassinate us and falsely accuse us of not speaking the truth when we are because they're wanting to protect Kent Hovind so badly. Um, well, I don't know. I don't understand. You know, what, you know what I've discovered, Julie and, and Nicholas, about Stephen Bowen? He was uh, in the room talking and everything, and Mark wanted to come in and basically refute him and rebunk him on some stuff and also wanted to participate in some biblical discussion. As soon as Mark came up on the screen, Stephen ran. Stephen's a sniveling, weak coward of a person. And Missing Mod, she sits there and pedals out all this. She won't come in here and uh, give out the facts or information. She just keeps on making stupid videos. How do you well, feel about that? Well, what I want to say is let, let's try to, you know, I, I try to be fair to everybody because like you, Brett, you know. Why be fair to her? She's putting Cindy Lincoln in danger, isn't she? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. That's why we called her out on that. But I'm also saying part of me thinks somebody's lying to her and confusing her. And, you know, and, I, and I'm hope like 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 Julie told her, you need to look at the evidence, honey. Like, don't just listen to what people tell you. Research it. And the reason I have a passion for that is because we were all lied to and confused by these people. You know what I mean? And now there is a point where you're just being but super foolish but at the same time if like you said you had people constantly in your ear doc had people calling you from camp he had people you know like just constantly manipulating you and that's what these people do that's what they're so good at and that's what's so scary about it you know what i mean like they have an agenda and they're going to use whoever whatever however if they have to pay them if they have to flip them if they, whatever they can do they're going to do whatever it takes, even if they have to lie over and over again, like Kent lying about Mark. He knows that he was not kicked out of the military for mental issues. He's seen the documents. He knows that personally. I've talked to him about that personally, but yet he comes right back on camera and repeats the same line. And it's like, fine, Kent, look, if you want to say I don't agree with this person or I don't like what the don't lie about what wasn't true, a Christian wouldn't do that. It's just like. Bowen, like Bowen, if you want to say I don't like Nick, I don't trust him, or I don't like, but but if you're gonna come out and make up lies that you know aren't true, then this is and, and this is kind of where unfortunately the even the, the playing field isn't even, but but truth is, will come out eventually, you know, and that's why I don't get so beat up about it, and I try to pray for everyone and, and hope that they eventually see that, and sometimes they just won't, but I pray that they do, you know, because it's not. It's not always my job to convince everybody. It's the Holy Spirit's job. And maybe they don't have the Holy Spirit, so I don't know. There's another thing. Uh, Kent has said that Mark's a, a druggie. He also said that uh, he keeps implying that Mark does weird stuff with his daughter and all this kind of stuff. He says he's a grown man that lives with the little girl and all that. I'm so concerned and all that. What is that all about? He is character assassination and projecting. He is shining the light off of him he's wanting to shine the light somewhere else get the focus off of me i'm gonna complain and talk about this person so so no one talks comes to me with my problems which you know that's what's, what it uh, is he knows that's not true and, and not only that um 
Mark had to fight for his daughter in court. He was investigated. They had to do home visits. He had to go to a psychiatrist. They had to make the daughter. I mean, you know how it is if you're fighting for custody, especially when the, you know, him and his parents now have made up and everything, but his parents were saying he was taking his daughter to a cult and all these other, like, you don't think they're going to vet him so thoroughly before they handed the daughter back to him? I mean, he did everything in his power to do every hoop, you know what I mean? And so for Kent to be saying... Why did they investigate him in the first place for it? Because his parents didn't want him taking Mackenzie to DAL. And so he went to court and fought for it. And he won because they found he's a good man and a good father. You know what I mean? And at the why time, did, why didn't the parents want him to do this because in the first place? Like mom said she already knew what kind of person Kent Hoven was, and she was trying to warn her son. And she said, "This is what she said." She's she said, uh, "Mark, you're a grown man. If you want to do that, fine. But I'm gonna protect Mackenzie." You know. Um, and now that, like they said, they've since made up and they are back together. And Mark tells his mom, "I should have listened to you, and I'm sorry I didn't." Yeah, you know? Mark. Mark's but, mother. Mark's mother is beautiful. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful father and mother he has. And um, when Mark was here at the time, Cindy and I uh, dropped Mark off over to his parents. And oh my gosh, I had a chance to speak with his mother. And and Mark's mom is smart, and she knew what kind of a corrupt man Kent Hoven was. She did her research. She knew, and she was smart. She's so far ahead of the game. And I even, uh, when I was with her personally, I said, how did you know? And she's like, I just, I just know. She she done her research. She read about it. She knew something was wrong. She had a funny feeling that place wasn't right. And just like with everybody else in the beginning, you know, when we were at the ministry, we, we defended that place. We defended Ken Hoven. We loved him. We loved the ministry. But then when you open your eyes to see and when you open your ears to hear, you'll start noticing things that aren't right. And this is what blows my mind with people, why they defend that place so so hardcore. I mean, there's people that defend Dinosaur Adventureland hardcore. And it blows my mind because it's like, don't these people see and hear that this man is actually not good? And Mark's mother, she nailed it right on the head. She knew. And she did not want Mackenzie going there to that dangerous place. She I got a it. question for you as well as Nicholas. Um, you, I don't know if you two realize this, but Kent attempted a while back, w about a year ago, when we were really going crazy over all this stuff. But he tried to get Chris Jones to do an interview with me, and even gave Chris Jones my number to try to contact so he could get on here and supposedly tell his story and justify whatever and tell what was a lie, what was truth, and all this. Now, he ended up, when he contacted, he sent me a bunch of pictures, and the pictures were of Facebook posts done by Mark Stoney, supposedly. I don't know if they were Photoshopped or whatever, but the post uh, said that uh, Mark Stoney was a white supremacist. What is your thoughts on that, and what do you know about it? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely. No, no. <laughs> Mark's not like that. Mark is, su I love Mark. He is awesome. Mark's not a white supremacist. No, no, no. No. Now, now, am I praying for him and reaching out to him that he will forgive? You know, especially what happened between you guys. And I think maybe, like Julie was saying, you asked, you know, what can I do? And I think, you know, this is what he said to me. He's all like, well, if Brett actually sticks and, and you know, just keeps going with the truth for a while, take care. He's like, but, and then, Sorry, the internet at the house is bad. <laughs> well, you're both sharing the same internet, right? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, uh, no. They've been putting videos out and uh, you're still standing for the truth, which I think speaks volumes about your character right now. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, you're not always going to convince everybody. You're not always going to, you know, Cindy kind of made a good point. She's like, I think Mark has a, a reason to be angry because of some of the things that were said on the channel and stuff. And, and so she's like, he's just got to give him a chance to cool off. And, you know, and, and like you yeah, said, they're, they're hurt. yeah. And, and, and not only that, Brett, I mean, you just by continuing your best to try to be respectful and, 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 and two, you know, I. Sorry. Oh, sorry. He, we have bad connection at the house. I'm not home. I'm outside of the house. <laughs> um, 
So, but anyway, no, Mark is awesome. Like and your just, intelligent design. Just much. have patience with you them. Recently, and Nick, your internet is bad. Nick, Nick. Okay. Okay. Yeah, kick him off. The internet's bad at the house. We live in the sticks in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I live out in the woods myself, but we try to. Let me show you something real quick and get your opinion on this. This is something that the uh, the pedo Chris Jones sent, so I don't know if there's any truth to it or whatever, but I need your opinion because you actually know, Mark. Are you able to see that? Um. Yes. Um. It is small printed, so uh, let me give me a sec to read it, unless you want to read it out loud for me because I'm on my telephone and it's uh, small printed. Okay. I'm going to have to take the gloves off tomorrow. Hold on. Let me Let me read it really quick. Go ahead and read that loud if you can. All right. Let me, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read it. It's very small printed on my phone. I'm not on a, a computer or a laptop. And I'm trying to read. I can get. I can make out some words, but some I can't because it's super small printed. Um, something about a Nazi type people I knew from the guard. If these clowns, is this Mark saying this or Dr. Hoven saying this? This is a post by uh, Mark Stoney, supposedly. Now remember, I know for a fact that people can Photoshop images and add any kind of crap they want to. There are things like that out there, but I'm getting your opinion because I know that you and Nick actually know him personally. So I wanted a verification on this. Well, you know, one thing I would say is something we definitely, you know, we should ask Mark, but I can tell you personally from knowing his character, he doesn't see color. He doesn't, I mean, he's, <laughs> I, I mean, it, none of us are perfect but he's i would i would never even assume that about him you know yeah now, i i couldn't read it very well but just to just me and nick knowing mark personally like we talk with them just about every single day and we've known him for how many years babe how, how many years now we've known mark well Long lots times. i many mean we, we separated uh, for a little while when he yeah but we that, still but we yeah. still stayed connected with him mark is a wonderful father he is a wonderful friend. There's nothing crazy about Mark at all. He is so chillax. He's so down to earth. He's so understanding. Mark is forgiving. I, I know, Brett, he doesn't seem forgiving right now um, with things that you see so far from him, but he comes around. Mark is awesome. There's no... Well, Julie and, and, and Nicholas, one of the reasons why I keep on feeling like the white supremacy thing is nonsense is because... Um, it seems to me that if he was a white supremacist, why would he try so hard to save the life of a, a little black kid for him? I mean, that seems right, like yeah. a totally right. the opposite of what a white supremacist right, would do. Right, right. But I, I thought that he should know that Chris Jones is uh, out there doing stuff like this and posting this type of stuff. Of course, to, shining to the people. light somewhere else, projecting, gaslighting. That's what they do. That's what they well, do. Just, get get the attention. Focus the attention somewhere else. Don't put the attention on me. We. Uh, I don't want anybody to know what I'm doing. That's wrong. Let's let's make fun and false accuse somebody else and take the attention off of me. That's what they all do. Right. Yeah. And remember, there. This is. I mean, this is what they're good at. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, um, that's why they're con artists for a reason. <laughs> So, and, as you both know, Kent has lost his uh, his channel as well as yeah. for Adventureland. I think that people should know this. I'm going to tell you from my perception, and you guys can share your perception. Um, not only did Kent, for some oddball reason, uh, admit that there were subs that were being bought, and he even named the price. He said $4,000, uh, which can get you a lot of subscribers. And also for those out there that might suggest that that's the YouTube. YouTube does not take money to do that, folks. Number two, um, one of the reasons why I think Dinosaur Adventureland went down so quickly is I don't know if you guys got to see the entirety of the video, but he actually told his audience to go flag other YouTubers. And oh. that is against the community guidelines in terms of service. Someone Kent, could report it. 
Yeah, so uh, somebody obviously retor- reported it within a couple hours of him saying it, and that channel went bye bye. That is, you don't get one strike for that; you get terminated. That's what YouTube even says in the rules. Uh, he does have two more channels up again, but they're probably going to be taken down too. They'll be shadow banned. He has some Genesis Bible Baptist Bible Church channel up, and then he has a uh, Doc Dino channel. So if everyone, you know, I mean. Like I said, I, I mean, it's sad because I hate that the message is getting destroyed from someone's behavior. You know what I mean? And this is something I wanted to, like, I always mention to you when we talk about it. It's like, we have to learn, we can't judge God based off man's behavior. I mean, especially in these end times. I mean, God is very clear about that, that there's going to be more and more and more false people. More and more people that God says, I never knew you. You know what I mean? And not only that, we're all human and we all make mistakes and none of us are always going to be perfect or do the right thing. And, you know, we really have to look to God's word to know him and know his character. You know, if we try to judge him based off of people's actions and Christians actions, we will always be severely let down. 